That's for sure. I envision it, and then I go. I don't never look back on the go. Pray hard and then I work and that's for sure. I'ma get it, that's for sure. I envision it, and then I go. I don't never look back on the go. Yeah. Pray hard and then I work and that's for sure. Hey. Pops always told me work for what I want. Yeah. Always did when they told me that I want, yeah. So I don't understand the spoil tip. My parents' money spoiled rich. I've been on my own, kick that I'm gon' have the world grip, ayy. Uh, I just suck my head and then I work and then I pray. Uh, Satan trying to give me all my game, but he might pray. Always wanted to be more, I'm feeling like I'm Ray. I slept in super amazing. Legendary church, how we doing this morning? Amen, amen, amen. I want you to look at the person next to you this morning and tell them, hey, you made it through the rain. Come on, tell them, tell them. You made it Tell them the rain didn't stop you. Nothing stopped you to get your praise on this morning. I want you to just lift up your hands and say, Heavenly Father, we give you glory this morning. Father, if it wasn't for you, I don't know what I would be doing, Holy Spirit. But Father, we give you this morning. We give you our, our morning. We give you our praise. You are worthy of it all, Lord Jesus. And Father, we say, have your way in this place. Is there anybody that can say, Holy Spirit, I'll get out the way so that you can have your way in this place? Yes. It's not about me this morning, but it's about giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. If there's anybody that says, Holy Spirit, do what you want, can you give him a loud shout of praise this morning? Amen. Come on, let's have some fun. Let's go. We came to worship in the house of God. I just want to tell you, the altar is open. Let's bring God up. That's praise, amen, because he's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake. 
believe it this morning. How many can say thank you, Jesus, for bringing me to this place? Amen. Break open prison doors. Yes. Set all the captives free. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Oh, nothing can stop this show. said something about that the rivers in California, there was many rivers who were starting to now spill over. And I was like, wow, it was saying how, you know, with this rain and everything that's been going on, there are rivers that are now beginning to actually spill over after 25 years, you know? The, uh, rivers that were, were, were really low, that were not full, amen? But with all this rain that has been coming, they're beginning to spill over. And I believe that today and now this is the time that there is an outpouring of the Spirit where He's going to begin to spill over with miracles, signs, and wonders. Where His presence is going to begin to spill over in your personal lives. Amen. Where there will be spillovers of encounters, of healings, of deliverance, of miracles. Amen. So if today you are looking for that, if today you need to be filled, let me tell you, the rain has come. The rain is here. His presence is here. He has arrived. And it's up to you. If you say, Jesus, fill my cup until it runs over. Fill my spirit. I thirst for you, Lord. And he will come. He will come and fill you with that holy rain, with that sweet rain that purifies, that washes away every fear, that washes away all transgressions. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, that you are filling up people's lives, that you are filling up lives, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. We praise you. You are worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend. There is beauty in what I can't understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. I believe you're the ones who are working, God. You're the ones who are working, God. The miracles I've seen, too good to not believe. You're the wonder working God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles 
life seem too good to not believe, too good to not believe, too good to not believe. And I can't resurrect a man with my own hands, but just the mention of your name can raise the dead. changes in my everyday lifestyle. Stopped going to the gym. I stopped playing with my kids. It was a constant pain every day. There was a, there was a point where I kept telling everybody, yeah, my pain, my back hurts, my back hurts. And then I, did, I, I thought to myself and I said, I guess I'm whining too much. I need to just stay quiet. Just stay quiet, Raquel. People have it worse than you. Late, late last year, we went through a situation with my brother Ruben, a lot of you guys know. And he was in pain because of something else that was going on with his body. And I kept telling myself, Raquel, your pain is not that bad compared to your brother. Look at your brother. Just, you know, it'll be okay. Don't worry. Just pray over your brother. Just don't, don't worry. Just accept the fact that you have pain. I kept telling myself that. Went to the doctors. They said, you know, ma'am, your body changes as you get older. Okay. Then I went to somebody else and they said, you know what, it was the epidurals. You had four epidurals, you had four kids. Sorry, these, this is what happens after you give birth and you, you, you put on the epidural. I went to another doctor and they said, you know what, COVID messed everybody up. Your body's just messed up. Then they gave me the last thing that they give everybody. Take these pills. These pills you know, will calm the pain, but we're not sure if it's going to go away. So there I am, taking pills and nothing I got to a point where I became comfortable I accepted the pain in my back Pastor Rocio spoke about people showing up to this place with a big smile and there I was praising up here and I'm being transparent this morning with you like nothing was going on when in reality I would get home with pain and lay down and cry and I said God what is this what's going on with my body I don't know but I don't like it Two weeks ago, the first English service we had here, Pastor Eli mentioned, I, I, I feel that there's healing. I feel that there's miracles and healing. And that touched my heart so much that I went home. And I grabbed anointing oil that morning in my prayer time. And I said, you know what, God? I refuse. I refuse to live with this pain. It's consuming me. It's taking away my happiness. I get to the church and I'm happy, but there is pain in my body. 
Let me tell you, church, I grabbed that anointing oil and I was broken and I was crying because leaders also have their moments where they're broken. We do, we're not perfect. And I grabbed that oil and I said, Jesus, you've done it for many. You've done it for my brother Reuben, you healed him. And you've done it for everybody, a lot of people that I know. And I ask you that you heal my body. I testify to Rocio that at that moment, I prayed and I felt such a beautiful presence of God in my prayer room, but it wasn't, it, it, it didn't end there. I went up to my laundry room. My back pain had been to the point where I had to kneel down and separate my clothes. I couldn't, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. And all of a sudden, I felt his presence. I felt healing from my toes just come up all the way. And that's when I realized, Raquel, no. That doesn't belong to you. You have to speak it with authority. You have to declare healing over your body. And I come this, close your eyes. Don't be comfortable. Don't be comfortable if you're in a situation where you've said, ah, uh, you know what, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. You know what, God will take care of it. No, your mouth has so much power. Your mouth has so much authority. You just have to open it and declare it and believe it the bible says that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed and you tell that mountain move it will move oh, and i've seen cancer disappear i've seen metal plates dissolve don't you tell me he can do it don't you tell me he can do it I've seen real life resurrection. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen troubled souls. I've seen addicts finally free. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen metal blades dissolve. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. And I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. And I've seen 
he's been good to you, I ask you to join me with this phrase. And how great is our God. Sing with me. place man can you just close your eyes just close your eyes just close your eyes and just just breathe it in breathe his presence holy spirit have your way have your way this morning have your way this morning lord come on can you just lift up a prayer right there yeah i just i just sense the lord is working right now yes he is working right now holy spirit have your He's meeting you right now. He's meeting you right there, right there in your seat. No preacher needed. Come on. No song needed. It's just you and him. You and him. You and him. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Come on. If you're going to give it to him, give it to him right now. Yes, Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers if they can come up and we're going to get ready to prick up the offering and the tithe. I want you to prepare your best offering. We thank every person who's here this morning. We know it was raining and you made it through the rain, but it's okay. The Lord wanted to shower you because he knew you hadn't showered in three days. So it's all good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So just step outside and get that, that blessing over your life. But uh, I want you to prepare your, your best offering and and, and uh, your tithe, if, if, you're, if you're a tither of this place, if you're brand new in this place, I want to say welcome to Legendary uh, Church. Uh, we love you. We're a family here. Um, we just got started, uh, but I just feel like I know you already uh, personally, man. If, if, listen, if you see me, come give me a hug. I'm a big hugger. Uh, some people get thrown off when I hug them. They're like, you know, y'all know those people that aren't really good huggers? You know, you want to give them a hug. They don't know how to act. They're just like, you know, folding under pressure. Yeah, I'm a hugger. If you want to give me a hug, man, come give me a hug. I'm a big hug. If you're a girl, stay away from me. My wife might punch you in the face. I don't know. I'm just saying. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, uh, but I want you to prepare your best offering, your best uh, tithe for the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you uh, this morning, Lord. 
We want to give you with our heart, Lord Jesus, with the joy on our face, Lord Jesus. So we thank you because you've given us so much. The least we can do is say, here you go, Lord. You bless us with health, with family, with finances, with blessing, Lord. So we give you our best offering in this mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. The ushers can go by and you can take a seat. You can take a seat. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Stay with me for a little bit. Come on, can we give it up for the worship team, y'all? Listen, the worship team is amazing. The worship team is amazing. Glory. I got a word in my spirit. Um, but first, before that, I want to tell you that, listen, I love our church. Do you love your church? Man, I, 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 listen, I love our church and I say our because it's not mine it's yours too but I, I just love when I'm down there and I'm just lifting up my hands and I see people serving God I see people praising it up I see people preaching it up I see people serving it up I, I just love our church because God is doing something in this place how many know that God is doing something in this place man if, if you missed I'm gonna just I'm gonna just remind you if you missed Pastor Rocio's preaching last week I'm going to tell you, if you missed that, I want you to go back on YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel and watch it again. It was such a blessing, and uh, I want you to share it with a friend. And, uh, man, it was, it was a huge blessing. But all I know is that I am so happy that you are here this morning. I got a word, but before I go into the word, this is how the Lord, I don't know how long I'm going to preach. This might be 15 minutes. This might be three hours, and the second service will just have to join us. I don't know what's going to happen. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, don't get scared. I know y'all hungry. Uh, but, but this is how the Lord uh, was directing me. I said, Lord, if, if you want me to speak, I, I, I want to come in with the word that's an on-time word for the people that are going to be sitting in those seats that morning. And I started asking. Lord, what do you what do you want to tell me, Lord? Give, give me give me something. What is what are we looking at? What is the season uh, that we're in? And and he he actually took me through a timeline, and I began to just get dates and specific days. And and he took me back last year. It was around Thanksgiving time when when we were all getting bigger and our pant sizes were stretching a little bit. Come on, somebody! And he took me to Thanksgiving, and and he, he reminded me that early November we had a leadership meeting. The legendary leadership gathered together, and we began to to talk about what 2023 would look like what 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 the conference that we were going to be hosting in February would look like what was the anthem what was the theme of it and as we gathered there and talked uh, nothing really came about and and I had a good idea that that I'm going to uh, give it to you it's a really great idea if you don't do it we said uh, how about we pray and we fast it's a really good idea. You should try it. It will bless you. And they said, how about we pray and we fast? And we come back. And the second meeting, we come back after prayer and fasting. And it was like the Lord was in the room. Not that it wasn't in the first meeting, but, but we needed a little prayer and fasting. And, and the Lord spoke to us. And it seemed like all the leadership gathered. And there was three words that the Lord was depositing. And it was this, end time revival. I know y'all seen the, the crew next. It was end time revival. And I said, end time revival. And the Lord even showed me a picture of an hourglass. How many know what an hourglass is? You know, that little thing, you, you, you turn around and a little sand starts coming down. And I said, man, it is the time. The time is the, I don't know if, if you know this, but the time is now. The time is now. And I said, okay, Lord, end time revival. That, that's what you're speaking. So we started to pray about end time revival. January 5th of 2023 on a Thursday. You can look it up. I remember clearly. I was in my prayer room and the Lord gave me a word. He took me to Isaiah and he said, behold, I am doing a new and you think that's the four people that know how to read the Bible. Okay, God, I'm behold, I am doing a new thing. And I said, Lord, you're doing a new thing. He said, yeah, Eli, I'm about to do a new thing, something you've never seen before, something that's going to be new. And I said, Lord, if you're doing a new thing, I'm going to get out the way. Because if you're going to do it, let me get out the way. The best thing that you can do when God wants to do something in your life is get out the way and let him do it. Don't try to do it on your own straight. Get out the way and let God do it. That was January 5th. January 15th on a Sunday we come up here and Pastor Reuben announces that we are launching after 33 years of this church we are launching an English ministry and I said Lord yes you are you are definitely doing a new thing this is what we're in right now you're doing something new I said thank you Lord January 23rd on my birthday the day the legend was born Eli Herrera yes sir yes sir 
that Monday was a Monday I get a call and it's a good friend of mine his name's Ross and he says uh, Pastor Eli I have to tell you something uh, this is something that the Lord has been putting in my heart and I have to tell you but I believe this is what he said I believe California and the world is about to experience revival I said oh my goodness yes 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 up to something is brewing something is brewing I said that's crazy because just last year the Lord told me that there would be an end time revival he said amen brother let's pray we began to pray on the phone and it was amazing fast forward February 8th in the university come on as University there is revival that breaks out we were not expecting it but revival breaks out all people from all different ethnicities colors races backgrounds denomination all people wanted to see because God was doing a new a new thing people flew out people hopped on planes on trains me and Z were planning our wives didn't let us go they said no 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 you can't go Revival's happening here. Yeah, yeah. February 8th, and while we were praying, praying, and pain, no. We were praying. We looked at the dates. I happened to look at the dates, and it says that the Asbury Revival began February 28th, and the last day it ended was February 24th. But on February 24th, there was a remnant here at Antioch, California. There was a remnant at 501 Auto Center Drive launching a conference called End Time Revival, and I'm telling you, the heavens of Antioch opened up. There was an unlocking in the city, and God is doing something something new something new and I said Lord when's the end date he said there will be no end date he said the end date is when I come back I'm gonna tell you something began and there will be no end date it's for those that want to hop in of what the Lord is doing and he began to tell me, and I said, oh, Lord, you're telling me all this. What are, you, what are you trying to tell me? He said, go to Joshua chapter 3. If you have your Bible, I want you to go with me to Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. I got three verses for you. I'm going to give you what the Lord told me to give you this morning. Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And he said, this is the time that we're in. This is the time, church. If you're sitting in this seat, if you're part of this family, I want to tell you that legendary right now is at the cusp of their Jordan. Mm. The Jordan represents the promise. Everything that the Lord has been saying for the last 20, 30, 50 years to you. Everything, all the promises, all the prophecies. We are at the cusp of our Jordan. Joshua chapter 3 says this. Watch this. It says, then Joshua rose early in the morning. And they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. Everybody say Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. Say crossed over. Verse 2, so it was after three days that the officers went through the camp. And I want you to key in on verse 3. Watch verse 3. And they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. In other words, when you see the glory of God moving. In other words, when you see revival breaking out. When you see the sick being healed. When you see Christian movies at the movie theaters. When you begin to see the news proclaim the goodness. And you begin to see God moving on Fox News, on CNN. When you begin to see revival happening. That's the time. Watch what you're supposed to do. <laughs> when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest and the Levites bearing it, it says then, everybody say then. Then you shall set out from your place. In other words, leave everything. Leave your comfort. Leave your convenience. Leave it all. And everybody say these three words. Go after it. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell him, yo, this is the message. This is my title. I want you to look at him and say, neighbor, go after it. Come on, whatever you got to leave, go after it. Whatever you got to delete, go after it. Whoever you got to leave, whatever you got to do, go after it. Go after it. Go after it. Go after it. You know, there, there's a moment that's happening. I, I recall, I was sharing with, with a few people, I recall a, a, a morning that my mom, uh, 
rest in peace to my grandma, uh, my mom had me uh, take my grandma to Chicago because she, she had dementia. And I remember she was like, uh, son, can, can you take her and do like a one-way flight to Chicago and come back? And I said, sure, mom. I said, I love you. Of course, I love my grandma. I was a bit scared because my grandma would sometimes forget who was with her. And then she would start screaming like, he wants to kill me. I said, what if she starts screaming that in the airport? I get tackled by like four police officers. I said, Lord Jesus, so I gave my grandma candy the whole way. My mom doesn't know this. If, 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 if Delete that part, okay? <laughs> I was giving her candy the whole time. And, and I remember we were there at the airport and we got there. You know, my grandma walked a little slow. We walked there. We sat down in our, in our, in our terminal. Uh, it was terminal B4, I still remember. We sat there and we were heading to Chicago. Across the terminal, the flights were boarding. And I remember there was this lady just there like this. Y'all seen those people in the airport? Some people just have no shame. They whole, a whole, uh, they just make themselves a whole bed. They look like just laying down, passed out completely. But this lady was passed out. She was passed out, and, and I said, oh, my goodness, they're boarding. You know, but maybe that's not her flight. I don't know. She was sitting in the middle of, like, two of them, so I was just like, maybe it's not. So the lady said, last call. Last call. And I'm, I'm kind of messed up. I regret not waking her up. I would have woke her up like this. You know, I would have pushed her mouth back, just closed it up a little bit. So, so I remember she was there. She was passed out. I said, Oh, man, and my grandma the whole time was telling me stories about, like, 19, like, 14. I don't even know what she was telling me. She was telling me, yeah, you remember so-and-so. I said, yeah, grandma, I remember so. I said, I was there. Remember I was there? She was like, oh, I do remember you were there. I, was not, I wasn't even born yet, y'all. So, so, so I was just like, yeah. So, so she was saying all this stuff, and, 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 uh, and so the, the lady comes out against and says, last call. This lady's sitting there. She goes back in. I still remember. About 15 minutes go by. She wakes up, and she goes, she goes like this, and I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be bad right here. She gets up, and she's like, uh, excuse me. She goes to the couch. She's like, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, uh, I was on this plane. They said, ma'am, this plane left like 20 minutes ago. We made about four different calls. She said, no, 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 this was my plane. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, she said, I wasn't ready. Hmm. When she said that, the Lord just began to speak. If you know me, I get words from the God the most awkward way. And she said, I wasn't ready. And the lady said, I'm sorry, but the plane left you. You know, there, there, she woke up early. Number one, she woke up early. She was there on time. She was at the right place. But she missed her moment. You got to be careful that you didn't wake up early this morning. You came to the right place and you miss the moment of God. You miss what the Lord wants to tell you this morning. We find Joshua at the cusp of the Jordan. He's at the Jordan. He's standing there. The people had traveled 40 years with Moses. The people had been all over the place. 40 years, which should have been a shorter flight, suddenly became 40 years. What should have been a shorter hike became 40 years. And they're there, and it's been 40 years because they've been disobedient and had no belief. They went and scoped the land and they saw giants versus being able to see the milk and honey. That's why you got to be careful with people. All they see is problems. You need some people that look at a problem and have a solution around you. There's people that their perspective is all, they're doing that wrong and they're doing this wrong and they're doing it. And I look at them and I say, well, how can you fix that? We need people that know how to fix things. People that have resolutions that don't just complain. That's the type of people Moses was with. With just complainers and complaining about where they were. And complaining about what was going on. And suddenly, guess what? One of the spies that came back and said, man, I see milk and honey. We can take these people. It's Joshua. And guess where Joshua's at at this moment? He's at the cusp of the Jordan. He's at the promise. But this crossing is important. I want to tell you why this crossing is important because it was not the first time that the people of God have crossed through a river. It was not the first time that the people of God had crossed through a body of water. They had crossed before, but this is how the Lord downloaded it to me. There is a difference between crossing the Red Sea and crossing the Jordan. You need to understand this because it was two crossings but two different destinations. I'm going to tell you what with Moses, crossing the sea, the Red Sea represents. Crossing the Red Sea is a season of deliverance. Crossing the Red Sea is a, is a season of fighting. Crossing the Red Sea is a season of pain and, 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 and headache. Crossing the Red Sea is a season of stretching. Crossing the Red Sea is a season where God is doing something. But let me tell you what crossing the Jordan is. This is where I believe we are. Crossing the Jordan is a season you go from trauma to testimony crossing the Jordan 
is a season you go from drama to destiny. Crossing the Jordan is a season you go from making excuses to making history. Do we got any history makers in the room? Crossing the Jordan is a season you go from generational curses to generational. Oh, I know I had some people in this room. You got to be able to cross the Jordan. It's the promises that God has for us. If you're ready to cross over, wave your hand like this and say, I'm ready to cross over. Come on, say, I'm ready to cross over. You have to realize that everything you've been through is not because of your past. Everything you've been through is tied to your future. We got people in this place that every time, it says, you don't know, man, my, my dad used to be an alcoholic, so I, I struggle with those generational, break them off in the name of Jesus. Everything you've been through is for your future. Everything, you're not here because the devil's chasing you. You should be here being chasing after God. And when you chase after God, God chases after you. That's, how, that's called the holy collision. That's your next song, Pastor Z. You gotta, you gotta do a song called Holy Collision. I don't even know. I just feel like that's a rap song right there. Who agrees with me? Come on. It's a holy collision. Oh, no, I'm just Watch this. In the, in the Old Testament, Joshua stepped into the Jordan and stepped into his promise. In the New Testament, Jesus stepped into the Jordan and gave us grace, forgiveness, and resurrection. How many say amen? God, God, God is doing something. But a lot of us have been stuck in our wilderness for way too long. I, I know people who've been in church for 30 years and they're sitting still in the same seat. I hope not with the same clothes. I just, I'm just praying that. But, but, but they've been saying, yeah. One, one of the things that my boss used to say, he, he used to say, you know, one of the, my pet peeves is people that say, yeah, I'm fixing to get ready. Hey, when, when you going to do that? You know, I'm just fixing to get ready. You've been fixing for 30 years. Get ready. Set out your feet and go for it. People are used to the wilderness. And when you're used to your wilderness, your appetite suddenly changes. You know, the Bible says that the Lord would send manna from heaven. But you see, you got to read the Bible. You can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. You got to look at the fine print. It says there is instruction after. We love to read the Bible, but we don't like to be instructed of what the Bible says. It says that the manna would come down, but watch what it would say. It said that the Lord prepared the manna for that day. <laughs> it did not say that the Lord was raining down pan dulce. He was raining down burritos, steak burritos, steak and shrimp burritos. Come on, somebody. Somebody's going to go eat after the burrito after this just because I said that. Well, <laughs> it did not say that, that they had a monthly subscription to Safeway all-you-can-eat buffet of manna. <laughs> They did not say you had a, a weekly amount of groceries. It said, go out and get the manna for that day. You know what this tells me? And want to know what a big, big problem is? That people come here on a Sunday morning, and I'm preaching to you, and you're catching the manna, but then you want to go home, and you want this manna to last you all week long. It does not work like that, my friend. You need the manna, the fresh manna on a Monday morning. You need church to go up on a Tuesday. You need some chicken on a Wednesday. You need some good steak on a Thursday. You need a fresh dose of the Spirit every single day. Every single day, God has something new for you. Every day. As a matter of fact, Jesus, how do we pray? Our Father that is in, him, in heaven, give us now our daily bread, not weekly bread. Not monthly bread. I dare to say not yearly bread. We put you to preach one time, you don't open your Bible the rest of the 300 and X amount of days. Suddenly you're so, so holy when it comes to your sermon. Oh, I'm going to go to my points now. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, I'll leave that preaching for another day. I got three things for you. Three things. Three things. If you're a note taker, take out your, your notes. Come on. If you have an iPhone, take out your iPhone. It has a little thing that says notes. If you have an Android, the door is right there. Get on your car and go home. Okay. 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 I'll just preach. Come on, somebody. I'm kidding. I love my Android people. I love you. I love you. I love you. 
Don't, hey, don't go to another church and say, my pastor ran me out because I had an Android phone. That's, that's just playing games. I'm playing games. All right. Point number one. This is what happens when you're about to step into your Jordan, into your promise. Number one, you need confirmation. Everybody say confirmation. Confirmation. Watch what verse 3 says. It says, and they commanded the people saying, when you see, everybody say see. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest of the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out of your place and go after it. Them seeing was the confirmation. They had to see what was happening. One of the worst things that can happen to someone is them go into the call of their life, what God has called them to do, their assignment, without being ready for war. I've seen people think they're ready because they want a title. They want a position. But there hasn't been no confirmation of the Lord. You still haven't been stretched. You still haven't been tested. You still haven't been. Come on, somebody. We need confirmation. This tells me when you read the Bible, they crossed to the promised land. Five chapters later, five chapters later, they get beat by a small, small little city called Ai. They had just beat Jericho they had beat they had crossed the Jordan they were fortified everything then they meet a little city called AI and they whoop their behind so bad this is equivalent to Pittsburgh High School beating the Oakland Ra or the, the Las Vegas Raiders I mean it could really happen don't get me wrong you know it, it, Pittsburgh High School can probably really beat the Las Vegas Raiders but I'm just you know that's what happened just had to throw that out there, you know. I see a lot of more Raider gear ever since Pastor Z got to this church. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. But that, that's, that's what it was equivalent to. Because they were at a, more, at a mountaintop at one moment, but then they found themselves at a valley at a different moment. Can I tell you, you can be at a mountaintop at one moment and find yourself at a valley the very next day? Do you want to know what's my hardest days to have? Monday mornings. Because after I preach it up on a Sunday, the enemy wants to come with discouragement on a Monday. But that's why I need to know that I got my daily bread. That I got the presence of God with me that can get me through Monday. I got the presence of God with me that can get me through a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday. That's why you got to seek God. Stop seeking churches. Stop seeking YouTube pastors. Stop seeking influencers. Get your face in the word of God. My goodness. <laughs> I went to Big House Beans, a cafe, and I looked at some dude. I said, man, God bless you. He said, oh, you a Christian? Just got said, God bless you. <laughs> I said, yeah, man. I said, I love Jesus, man. I'm a believer. He said, bro, I go to church. I said, you go to church? What's your church? He said, well, I got a pocket pastor. I said, you got a Pokemon? What would you say? <laughs> got to catch them all? I, I, I don't know. He said, I got a pocket pastor, but my pastor's right here. He, he pulled out his phone and he showed me Stephen Furtick. I was like, my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh. Boy, you in Antioch, California, man. My boy Stephen Furtick is like in Carolina, so I don't even know where he's at. I love you, Stephen Furtick. I believe I'll be preaching in your church one day. Come on, somebody. Save that. Okay. I'll never forget. This is why it's important to have the presence of God. i never forget uh, back in the day when, when I used to have a six-pack. Um, why y'all laughing? No, no, I didn't, I didn't have a six pack. I didn't have a six. <laughs> but back in the day, we used to, I used to love go ball. I, I used to love playing basketball. I, I, I love playing basketball. I love playing basketball. And, and we used to do it weekly. Pa me and Pastor Daniel, uh, uh, our friends, like we would do it like routinely, like all the time, all the time. Pastor Daniel actually had a six pack. I, it's no joke. He, got, he has proof. I, I'm a witness to that. Lord Jesus, but then life happens, you know, burritos and stuff like that happens afterwards. But 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 we used to ball. Listen, we used to ball and and we were we would go ball to this place called Calvary Temple. It's a church here by the freeway. Now it's better known as the Bay Church. We would go up there and ball. And I recall this very one moment where it was about 15 of us, 15 guys, and we were ready to ball. I used to have these Kobe's. I'm a big Kobe fan, so so I almost switched the text where it said they were gonna cross the Jordan. I was gonna switch it, they were gonna cross the Kobe, but I can't do that. I can't do that because that's in the Bible. So so I remember I used to put on these these Kobe's and, and when I would put these on, I just just felt untouchable. I felt untouchable, and uh, and and everybody wanted me on their team, right? My right, Pastor Daniel, everybody, okay, just, just, 
just got to throw that out there. And, uh, and, and I remember we were there. We went up. Fifteen dudes got off the car. We were ready to ball. You know, we started picking teams. You know, you do the lineup. I got him. No, I got him. I got him. He's on my team. And, we, you know, we were, we were arguing about who was which and which, which team was going to do which team. And then, and then we went through the rules. And we went through the rules and the regulations. Well, that's out of bounds. And, and if and there was no hard fouls. And you got to clear it. And y'all don't know basketball. All the rules we do right before. You know, we do more rules than play because play, we get tired, like, after one game. Right? So we had all the rules, all the rules, all the rules. Finally, it came. The stage was set. We were prepared. We were ready. I'm ready. I look. Everybody's ready. You got him. You got him. You got him. I was like, check ball. Check ball. Who, who got the ball? You, you didn't bring a ball? No. I thought you were going to bring the ball. Yeah. Check ball. We went to go play basketball without a basketball. The most essential part of the game was missing. I am afraid that many churches operate this way. The most essential part of the service, which is the presence of God, is missing. We got the schedules, we got the life groups, we got the program, but no move of the Spirit. I refuse to be a church with no presence of God. Presence of man will fail you. Presence of God will be there through the thick and the thin. Tell the person you need confirmation. Number two, tell them you need consecration. <laughs> what is to be consecrated, to be set apart? Watch this, to live a righteous life of obedience to God. Hmm. A righteous life to obedience to God. Because listen, you cannot claim the promises of God and live life on your terms. You know, me and Z, me and Pastor Z, we talk about this all the time. <laughs> Sometimes one of the biggest blockings to somebody's call and assignment is not drugs. It's not alcohol. It's not lust. You want to know what sometimes the biggest blocking to someone's assignment that God has for them is? Their own dream. It's saying, no, Lord, this is what I want to do. Because I am good at this. I know I can do this. And the Lord says, well, if you got your plan, let me step back. And you're, when you're ready to take on my plan, I'll be here waiting. Yeah. We cannot do God's assignment on our own terms. When you do God on a Sunday and live what you want, do what you want, be with whoever you want, say whatever you want, Monday through Saturday, you're not doing God's will. You're doing religion. But God, God's not looking for religious believers. God is looking for remnant believers that say, I am consecrated. I am ready to do the Lord's work. Despise what I want to do. Lord, let your will be done. You say, man, I, I, want, the, I, want, the, I want the anointing oil over me. You want to know how to get the anointing oil over you? Get consecrated to God. There was ten virgins in the Bible, ten virgins. Five had oil in their lamp and five didn't. And one came and said, listen, can I get some oil? You know what they said? Get your own oil. Get your own. Because this oil is costly. You cannot get anointing by association. You can only get anointing by consecration. Planting your face on the ground and saying, God, I need you. Just because I hang around anointed people don't make me anointed. That's a groupie. We need to stop being holy groupies and trying to be, oh, oh yeah, I, I roll with so-and-so. Dropping names. Drop the name of Jesus on somebody. And I, and I know this guy, and I know this big-time person. I know this guy in the ministry, and I, and I don't care who you know. Do you know who God is? get consecrated. Look at that person next to you and tell them you need confirmation. Tell them you need consecration. And last but not least, I'm done here. The worship team can come up. Number three, you need courage. 
Look at somebody say, hey, you, you need courage. Tell them you need courage, you need courage. If you look at Joshua, Joshua chapter 3, the first 13 verses, all 13, is Joshua simply giving instructions. He was saying, do this, do that. And when you see this, and when you see all this, and when you see that, and when you see that, when you see, and then finally we get to verse 14, and he says this, watch this. He says, when you see that, it says, so it was that they set out. You need courage to set out. You know, my wife didn't even know, but she started talking about an overflow. It said that the Jordan was so heavy on the overflow that there was so much overflow that it made it even that much tougher to go through it. Sometimes life is going to be tough. What, what Jordan are you dealing with? Because to get to the promise, you got to go through the Jordan. What, what Jordan are you dealing with? Is it complacency? Is it sin? Is it lack of forgiveness? Is it unbelief? What is stopping you from having the courage to go through the Jordan? You know, you have to understand that there's a big difference between going. When they left Egypt and headed to the wilderness, they were running away from the enemy's camp. When they went through the wilderness, through the Jordan, they were going towards the enemy's camp. You got to have courage to go towards the enemy's camp. The Bible says that he told Joshua, everything that your foot steps on will be what? When are you going to step? When are you going to step? You know, I'm, I'm believing for a bigger building. We, we, we haven't even packed this building out. I'm already believing for it. Y'all, I'm going to tell you what I'm believing for. Y'all seen AMC Theater? I'm going to just throw it out here. Who's seen AMC Theater on Lone Tree Way? I've been putting my hands on that building for like the last month. I, every time I go somewhere, I look at it, I stop, I have to stop by, and I say, Lord, if you say, if you say so, I'm going to declare this building mine. If you say so, make it mine, because the Bible says anything. I even put my foot on it one day. So like this. Somebody passed by, I was like, I might have looked funny. Security rolled up on me and said, oh, you okay, sir? I said, yes, sir. The Bible says that anything that my foot touches will be mine. He looked at me. He's like, you crazy? I said, absolutely. I'm crazy for God. Stand to your feet. You got to have courage to go after the promise that God has for you. You got to have strength. You got to know that God's going to be with you in the wilderness, the same he's going to be with you in the promised land. As I was heading out of work the other day, I had this, this moment. And I had to call my wife and I called her and I said, baby, I love you. She said, I love you too. It's just random. I said, you know, I just, I, I just came to the realization that we're only really going to have about 80 summers, 80 winters, 80 autumns, and 80 springs. If we're blessed, because some people don't even get there. And she said, whoa. I said, baby, I'm like on year 34. My time is running out. I said, I got to go after it. You, your, your, your time is now. You got to go after it. The thing that they prophesied over you, it's not going to happen if you don't step to it. You can't just keep looking at it. There's a point where you have to go from here and say, Lord, I don't know if I'm ready, but listen, I'm going to just step into it because I know you'll be with me. I want you to close your eyes and lift up your hands. Listen, this call, this call right here, it's not for the complacent. This message is not for those that want to keep doing the same thing over and over, keep running in cycles. I've come to learn that a cycle is actually chains. We say, oh, it's just a cycle I go through. No, that's chains. A cycle is links put together. It's a chain. If you're saying this morning, I'm ready to break this chain off my neck. I'm ready to break this chain off my feet. I'm ready to break this chain off my hands and go after every single thing 
the Lord has for me. I want you to step up to these altars. The altar, the altar's here. Come on, the altar's here. If that's you, I want you to make your way up. We're going to have the prayer team ready to pray over you. If you say, Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, I'm ready to cross my Jordan. I'm done being in the wilderness. But tonight, today, today, this morning, today, I'm ready to go into my promise. I'm ready to go into my call. I'm ready to go into my assignment. I'm ready to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to lift up my hands for you. I'm going to do everything that you've called me to do, Lord. It is for you, Jesus. If that's you, come on, lift up your hands. The prayer team will say, thank you, Holy Spirit.
one of the promises, since we're in the conversation of promises, one of the promises that the Lord promised this house would be that this would be a house of healing. And we've seen testimonies like Sister Raquel, and we've seen and heard about other testimonies. So I just sense in my spirit, you don't need a touch from man, you need a touch from God, and he'll heal you this very moment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something that I did the very first service. and Most likely it's going to be my, my go-to because God's promises are yes and amen. I want you to touch whatever area that you've been struggling with. If you are sick in this place or have been struggling with pain, if, if it's emotional and it's something mental, physical abuse, sexual abuse, I just simply want you to touch your, your head like this. But if it's a part of your body, I want you to touch that part right now. Right now, I feel, I feel the Lord heavy in this place. Do not get it twisted. This is not Pastor Eli healing you. This is the Holy Spirit operating, the greatest surgeon. Holy Spirit, I declare right now healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every sickness. We come against every pain. We come against any cancer, any diabetes, any broken bone, any mental health, any depression, any anxiety, any suicidal thought. We come against it by the blood of the Lamb, by the, by the blood, by the name that's above any name. Right now, healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare it so the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's it. That's all it took. If that's you, I want you to just give glory to God. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Give glory to God right now. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. It already happened. It already Give Him glory. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Yes, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for this morning. Yes. We give you thank you for this time that you've been with us. Lord, we, we leave this place, but not your presence. Come on, can you just say this, this prayer with me out loud before we, before we leave this place? Say, Holy Spirit, I leave this room, but I bring you with me. Wherever I go, to my work, to my school, with my family, at the grocery store, at the doctor's appointment, I am with you, Lord Jesus, and you are with me. So I give you glory, I give you all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Can we say amen? Amen. We love you, family. Don't forget, we are getting closer to Easter Sunday. I want you to join us, invite a friend. We'll be putting our news. If you do not follow us, listen, if you don't follow us, follow us on Legendary Movement on Instagram. If you are new in this place, we have a connection booth in the back. We would love to get your name, who you are, and get you plugged in. We are starting life groups. We are starting men's Bible study. We are starting, we are starting women's Bible study. We are starting young adult Bible study so we want you to get plugged into the family don't just serve God on a Sunday serve them throughout the week and let's just build together we love you see you guys soon God bless you and stay legendary love y'all